Okay, so let us look, remind ourselves of quickly of the system. We've got a sensor. The sensor, when it detects something, is going to cause an action potential or an impulse to be generated in the neuron. Right? Now, it's, it's a signal, it's, it's electrical in nature, but it then moves down that sensory neuron. Sensory neuron then stimulates the relay neuron to have an action potential. And when the action potential gets to the end of the relay neuron, there's going to be an action potential in the effector neuron. That action potential is going to move down that effector neuron until it gets to the end of that cell. And when that happens, the effector is going to be stimulated to make something happen which constitutes a response. We're going to look at two things now. First, we're going to look at what is the nature of that electrical signal that moves along the cell. Okay, we've got these long cells called neurons. Something electrical happens in them that allows something to move from one end of the cell to the other, constituting a signal. But what is that? Now that is what we call, so the, if the thing that changes in the cell, that is called the action potential. In most cases, you can get away with just referring to it as an impulse, when that's not the focus of what you're talking about. But the nature of the impulse is called the action potential. That's that special thing that is moving along the cell that we consider the impulse. But in order to under understand the action potential, we first need to understand what the cell or how the cell is behaving when nothing's happening. And that is what we call the resting potential. Okay, so we're going to look at neurons. We're going to look at what is happening in a neuron when at rest. And then we start to look at what changes during an action potential that makes the signal. We'll look at how that signal moves. And then the next part of the story is how does, because that, that, those events are happening within the cell. So how does a signal travel from one cell to another cell across a gap? So synaptic transmission is the next thing that we're going to look at. That's how the sensor stimulates the sensory neuron. That's how the sensory neuron passes the impulse along to the relay neuron. That is how the relay neuron passes the signal to the effector neuron and how the effector neuron effectively stimulates the effector. Okay, so let's begin that.